In this tutorial, you'll understand the concept of Angular modules, and uh, you'll finally understand what the mysterious empty array is at the second argument of angular.module. I'm going to demonstrate this by creating a new directory called the modules directory. And again, the same app structure. I have index.html with the two scripts, angular and app.js. And I have an ng app pointing to modules app. And I have app.js, which creates the module modules app. Again, with the mysterious empty array. Now, what we've been seeing so far is uh, something that follows the structure like this. You create a module and you register your controllers with that module. It's typically the case, but sometimes you end up having a really huge application and you might not want to have every controller of yours or every directive of yours in that same module. I told you module is like a phone book. Now, if your phone book gets really, really big, you don't want to have everything, every contact of yours in that single phone book. You want to split that up. So you can do that with Angular modules. You can actually create multiple modules and link them together so that they work as a single application. Let me demonstrate that by creating a controller over here. So let's say I have an app.controller. Call this hello controller. And uh, let me just put something on the scope here. This dot I'm from the main module. So it's just a string property on the scope. Now I'm going to take this controller and use it in my HTML. I'm gonna have a div ng controller this should be all news now as ctrl and inside this i'm going to print the ctrl dot hello message and if i refresh the page i get the message now if i have way too many me controllers and I want to somehow modularize them. I want to split them into multiple modules and multiple files. Having them all be a part of the same module is going to make it hard for you to split them and distribute them. What I want to do is create this module as a reusable module and have other people use it, right? So I have created this hello controller. It's a really fancy controller. I want other people to use it. Now, I don't want them to say, hey, copy this code and use it in your application, paste it in your application and change the module names and all that stuff. I want them to be able to import this somehow. And the way to import this is by sharing modules. You essentially create a custom module for your reusable elements, and then you share that module and have other people import that module. Here's how you do it. So let's say I create a module over here. I'm going to create a new file, say my module.js. Okay, now I do something very similar to what I've done over here, but rather than have it be a modules app, I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call it my hello module. Okay, so this is a custom module, and uh, I'm going to call this my hello module. The variable name really doesn't matter. And over here, in the my hello module, I'm registering the hello controller. Right, and I'm going to change the message to say I'm from the my hello module. Right, so this is a module that I have created where I have isolated my functionality. This has got nothing to do with the app. Right, so this exists in isolation. As it is its own module, and it's going to contain its own functionality registered with that module. Now I can take this JavaScript file my module.js and I can share it with people. And say hey here's my cool new module that you can use in your app right so let's say somebody else is writing an app like this my modules app and let's say i remove this stuff now i don't want to write that controller i'm going to import this code over here i'm going to add this javascript file into the directory and i want to use the javascript and the functionality in the modules app now how do i use it i can of course Use the same controller, hello controller, but now this time it'll not work. 
I have a look controller over here. If I were to refresh this, and of course if I save this app, refresh, it will not work. If I were to look at the console, it will give me an error. It will say hello controller is not available. Now I have this my module.js that I want to import. What should I do? The first thing I'm going to do is import the JavaScript file. Here, just like I have app.js, I'm going to have the module my module.js. Okay, so I've imported the JavaScript file. Is this good enough? Let's see. Well, it's still not good enough because even though you have the JavaScript over here, it's not a part of the modules app that you're using in index.html. Index.html is using modules app. So what Angular is going to do is when it sees a controller, which phone book does it look up? It looks up the modules app phone book. And in the modules app phone book, there's really nothing. So it doesn't find hello controller and it complains. What you, want to, what you want Angular to do is say, hey, not only look at this phone book, also look at this other phone book that I've imported, which is the my hello module. How do you add that to the Angular's lookup? You do that when you're actually creating the module. You see here, I'm creating the module. What I want to do is I want to tell Angular, hey, not only do I need to use this module, here are the other modules that I want to add as a dependency. And the way to do this is by using this array. So far, we have had this as an empty array. What this array actually means is a list of modules that you are dependent upon. Here, I'm dependent upon the my hello module module. So what I'm going to do is add that as a dependency over here. So inside the array, I'm going to have the my hello module added as a dependent module. Right. So it's a string which contains the name of the module. This can be one module, it can be multiple modules, in which case you're gonna comma separate and then add the other module names, but in this case it's just one. So this is actually the significance of this array as a second argument. All right, so now I'm gonna save this and refresh the page. Now here you see, I get the message from the module, which is this message, all right? So I was able to successfully import the module and use it. Now this is where your code becomes reusable. You can create these modules with the stuff registered in it, and then you can share this file. Then what a consumer would need to do is first add the link to the file in index.html. Secondly, add a dependency to that module in your angular.module, in your module creation step. All right. Once you've done those two steps, then whatever this module has registered within it, here it happens to be a controller, it could be a bunch of other stuff, whatever this module has registered within it is gonna get imported into your main application module and you can use it in index.html. So this is the significance of modules in AngularJS, this is how you import and use a module. Now before I wind up, I should also let you know that there is another signature for the module function. Now here, I'm using angular.module with two arguments. Let's say I forget that and I say var app equals angular.module angular.module of modules app. If I were to forget this second thing, what Angular actually does is retrieve the module. It's basically going to get, let's say I have an app too, what it's going to do is it's going to retrieve the module that was created over here, which is essentially the same as app. So when I do this without the square bracket as a second argument, it's not going to create the module, it's going to get it. I know this is very bad design and this has confused a lot of people, but remember that when you don't have the second argument, what Angular is doing is not creating the module, it's fetching an already created module, with this name. If it doesn't have that module, it's going to give an error. So remember that, and that's actually the reason why it's very important to have this empty array as a second argument when you are creating modules in Angular.